This could be the most easiest outerwear garment to make. And I so cannot wait the Witcher's second season. And this cap is really functional, especially in a day when you see someone that you are not ready to see now, you can simply This cape is a beginner-friendly project and it will not take too much of your time. It has a handkerchief hem and a pretty large hood to protect you from bad weather. We suggest to add snap buttons at the middle and at the sides of the cape, but feel free to add as many snap buttons as you like or skip them at all. I will be using the Cybele cape pattern which you can find in our Etsy or online store. It comes both in A0 format, which you can print at the copy shop, and also in US letter A4 formats, which you can easily print at home or at an office. Since it takes some time for me to get to a copy shop, I usually print the patterns with the regular printer and then I assemble them myself. I will be using a wool mixed fabric for coats, but this design doesn't really have any limits. I can also imagine myself making this coat from plush fleece and wearing it as a blanket at home while watching some TV series. Or you can also use a water repellent fabric to keep yourself dry during rainy days. A matching thread will be needed. For the hems and edges, I will be using a grain ribbon. You can also use a canvas ribbon or maybe leather drips. Or you can also use a facing from the same fabric. Or if you have a very fine fabric, you can even do simple double folded hems. We also recommend to use 3 to 7 snap buttons. For this cape, I will be using only sewing machine straight stitch. And now we are ready to cut everything out. But there's one thing I want to bring your attention to. As you can see, in my case, the fabric has sort of a hair, fibers that are going towards down. It is very tempting to place the pattern pieces like this, but then for one detail, the hair will go up. So I need to place them in this way. It does take more fabric, but if the hair is going up, then the raindrops cannot fall off so easily. And also the fabric starts to look very untidy quite soon. And just as a reminder, you should check the exact direction for the fabric every single time for every single garment. It could be because the print has a specific direction and it could also be because the fabric is reflecting light differently from different angles and if you cut pattern pieces in opposite directions, it might even look like you have cut those pattern pieces from different fabrics. After we have cut everything out, let's start with the shoulder seams. So place the back panel with the front panels with right sides facing each other. Pin the shoulder seams. I will be using a flat felt seam, therefore I will stitch 2 cm apart from the edge. Let's work with both shoulders simultaneously. I cannot help but share, it was such a wonderful day. So now you can press the seam either open or towards back, it doesn't matter that much. Now let's trim off the excessive amount of the seam allowance for the back panel. You should leave around 7 to 10 millimeters of the seam allowance. To be more precise, I am using a ruler and a fabric marker, and then I simply cut off the excessive part. After that, we need to fold the front seam allowance over the back seam allowance, and let's press it. Take the widest seam allowance and fold it over the narrowest one, so the raw edge is hidden inside. 
unfold it and press it down. In this way it will be easier to make a stitch later. Now stitch 1 mm apart from the folded edge. When it's done, I will show you how I am adding the grow grain ribbon. I usually start by marking that seam allowance, which is 1 cm in this case. I do these markings on the right side of the fabric. Just so you know, the marker isn't permanent. After that, I place the ribbon on the cape's right side. The ribbon's edge is matching the markings. Then I will make a stitch around 1 mm apart from the ribbon's edge. I will work in this way for both openings at the front. When you reach the edge, simply trim off the ribbon. Fold the ribbon towards inside and press it in a way so there is no part of the ribbon visible from the cape's right side. Since my ribbon has a silky structure, I will pin it down to make sure that it's held in the place. If your ribbon isn't as slippery, then you can skip the pinning. While we are here, I will repeat these steps with the other side as well. Make a stitch 1 mm apart of the ribbon's edge. So here you can see the result. Now I will do exactly the same steps for the bottom hems, both for the front and back panels. Except this time fold over the ribbon around the edge you have already sewn on the ribbon. Pin this edge. Continue working as previously by matching the ribbon with the marked seam allowance and stitch 1 mm apart from the ribbon's edge. Work in this way for both front hems. After that, press the ribbon towards inside. And again, stitch 1 mm apart from the other ribbon's edge. So this is the end result of the corner. Of course there are other ways how to do it, but this is a very simple method. Now let's work with the side edges of the cape. This will be a bit tricky. I recommend to make a stitch starting from the hem until you reach the shoulder seam. Do the final stitch exactly at the shoulder seam and fold the ribbon as I am showing and trim off the excessive part. Place the ribbon on top of the previous ribbon and start the stitch exactly from the shoulder seam. When I'm folding this corner towards inside, it is giving a lot of tension. That's why I will do a few snips, but be very careful not to cut the stitch itself. Now fold the ribbon in a way it looks good and all the row edges are hidden inside. Continue pressing. And then again make a stitch 1 mm apart from the other ribbon's edge.
Now here you can see there's like a hole left so I will make a stitch on top of it and try to do the stitch as close to the shoulder seam as possible so the stitch will be quite invisible. Basically we have almost finished the base of the cape so now we just need to make the hood. Let's start with sewing the darts. So I always pin the darts starting from the narrowest part until the edge of the fabric. But when I'm sewing I start from the edge up until to the narrowest point. Repeat these steps with the other three layers as well. I will show you a special trick how to treat darts if you have a heavy fabric. Start by cutting the darts open. Stop cutting where the dart is around 2 to 3 mm wide. Press the dart open. Take a small scrap of an interfacing and place on the tip of the dart. This will ensure that the narrowest part will not start to tear. You can use this method when you have a lining or a fabric that is covering the inside of the dart. Lay the hood side panels with the hood's middle panel with the right sides facing each other. Pin around the longest edge. Stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. Repeat it with the other side panel. Press the seams open. I recommend to use the curved edges of the ironing board to better access the curved seam parts of the hood. Repeat these steps with the inside layer of the hood as well. Now take the inside layer of the hood and fold 1 cm of the bottom edge. Press this edge. This step later will help us a lot to better join the hood to the cape. Lay both layers of the hood with the right sides facing each other. Pin the longest edge. I recommend to start by matching the seams. Stitch along this longest edge. Remember that the layer with the pressed edge is the inside layer. Now we should understitch the seam we just made. So push the seam we just made towards the inside layer and make a stitch 2 mm apart from the seam we previously made. I recommend to work from the right side so we can see how the stitch is looking from the outside. Flip the hood from the inside out. Press along this edge and try to make sure that the inside layer isn't visible from the outside. Now let's lay the cape's right side together with the hood's right side. Take only the outside layer of the hood and pin it around the cape's neckline. Match the darts with the shoulder seams. Stitch around the neckline. Oh, the most annoying part is when you are making a seam and you finish the seam but then you realize that the lower thread has ended when you were only halfway of the seam so you have to redo it again. Okay, when it's done, then press the seam towards the hood. If you have a heavy fabric like I do, Feel free to cut off some parts of the seam allowances or some parts of the darts. This will help to reduce the thickness. And as always, be very careful not to cut too much and do not cut in the seam. 
At this point, I will be using a stitch in the ditch method. Take the previously pressed edge and place it over the stitch that joins the hood to the neckline. Place this edge in a way that it covers the stitch. I will fix this edge in a place by using a hand stitch. In general, I try to avoid hand stitching as much as possible because it just takes a lot of time. But in this case, I have very thick fabric and if I will be pinning it, I'm risking that those pins might kinda get lost in those layers. So it will be much more safer to hand stitch. Now make a stitch on the capes part right below the hood. Try to get as close as possible to the previously made stitch, but do not stitch on the hood part. And also you need to catch the seam allowance of the inside hood layer. So in total you are sewing through 3 layers of your fabric. So looking from the inside, the stitch is visible on the inside hood part. But if we are looking from the outside, it's actually quite invisible. So now take out the threads from the hand stitch. And the final thing to do is to sew on the snap buttons. You can use the pattern for the recommended placements. I will sew on 3 snap buttons at the front and 2 buttons at the sides of the cape, so it will kinda make a sleeve shape and it will hold together on my body much nicer. But if you prefer more of a loose fit, then skip those snap buttons and it will be perfectly fine. If you want to close it more, then of course you can add like 4 or 5 snap buttons at the front. Or maybe you even want to do the regular buttons, so the choice is up to you. Give the final press and enjoy the wonderful weather outside. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave us a like. And subscribe to our channel for more sewing and knitting tutorials. Bye!